So we've been learning about various aspects of solution architecture together. And I think it's time we uncover yet another aspect of the job, the solution architecture document, commonly called SAD. So I built this series of videos to explore what the solution architecture document is, what is its purpose, how it is structured, and how to build a complete SAD that addresses the needs of all involved stakeholders and communicates your solution in the most precise manner. And we'll use a real example to build together a real SAD that I would use in real life. My name is Ilyas, I'm a senior solutions architect. Now let's do this. First things first, why go through the efforts of creating a SAD? Well, building anything, really, is basically making a series of decisions. Some of the earliest decisions come from designing the architecture, and, you know, these carry a high degree of importance because they affect the decisions that come afterwards. Think of it this way. Once an airplane is airborne, it's impossible to change the wing design or to change the way the seats are arranged. Well, maybe the seats are easy to change. Um, but usually it's just too late to review it. And yet, that's what software engineers tend to do when we skip the process of architecting our solution and we jump directly to the implementation thinking, yeah, you know what, we'll just address this thing down the line. We'll just cross that bridge when we'll get to it. Well. I'm, I'm sure you can relate to a time when teams started working on implementation without understanding the overall architecture. So what happens usually is that when the business comes up with change requests or when a bug is uncovered, well, you know, we have no choice other than hacking our system accordingly. We copy paste from one component to another, the software ends up becoming more and more complicated, and two, three years down the line, well, the system is just inoperable. It's the final brain cell. Be -ne -be -ne so what we do, we call it legacy. We blame the previous developers and we tell ourselves that by migrating to this new framework or using this new technology that just came out, we will fix it all, only to repeat the same thing again and again. And weirdly enough, companies will have time and budget to rewrite their software and migrate it to a new framework, but weirdly enough, they don't have time and budget to architect it right the first time doesn't make sense to me. So I really just want you to remember that building something that works is easy. If your manager or director is up your ass, giving you, giving you an unrealistic ETA, you know, just remind them that of course you can. All you get to do is clone Laravel, by connect it to MySQL DB and start implementing the business logic. And sometimes that's all you have to do. But building, a solution that scales, you know, building a solution that is resilient, um, that is secure, that it follows compliance, that can serve customers, you know, all around the globe with the same level of performance. Well, that's a little bit harder, my friends, uh, because now you are thinking of replication and encryption and, and caching and latency and cost, you know, and you need to build a proper CI-CD pipeline, but you know what's even harder than that? In our domain, the hardest thing ever is building a system you can maintain for years to come. You can maintain for decades, why not? You know, a system that can evolve with customer needs, with business realities. It can, it can survive market shifts and technology improvements. You know, a system that won't crumble if your company decide to change their payment processor or integrate a machine learning pipeline in the future. Now we'll get to the how in the second episode of the series. And by all means, if you're in a rush, here's the link. But I strongly believe we should start with the why first. Software architecture is about being analytical, you know, after all, and we want to adopt the think twice, cut once approach. Dad always says, measure twice, cut once. My daddy always said, Cleveland Jr. Quit jumping on the bed. <laughs> we didn't measure, we didn't measure. And a proper foundation laid down by a solid system architecture is a major cornerstone and it 
It yields a number of benefits. Let's explore some of them. As you've already seen in this video, you can't come up with an architecture at your desk. You just can't. You'll have to be working closely with stakeholders, such as business analysts, such as product owners, marketers, developers, and of course, end users. They are stakeholders as well. And so you have to be working with these uh, people to make sure that all requirements are identified. They are understood as well. And I'm talking about functional, non-functional, technical and operational requirements. And we'll see examples of those in a bit. Second, you want to start thinking about quality attributes as early as possible in the software development process. You know, it is, it is, it is super difficult and, and super costly to make changes to fulfill them later. Just remember the airplane example. So if we fail to predict if a software system will fulfill quality attributes until it is implemented and tested, then costly and time-consuming rework may be necessary down the line. There's also the fact that it eases communication among stakeholders, you know? Putting the architecture on paper allows you to communicate and explain it to others. Some stakeholders, maybe they are more interested in cost and duration, that's it. Others might be interested in the security of the system and maybe a different group would be only interested in whether the system could maintain um, the high flow of customers during the, uh, the upcoming sales season, Black Friday peak. <laughs> Your architecture document shall be abstract enough that many stakeholders with little or no guidance should be able to comprehend how the system affects their needs. And really, the best way, I believe, to capture all stakeholders' input as a solutions architect is by putting yourself in their situation and looking at problems from their perspectives. Now, there are other goals of the SAD, but you must be eager to get to the how. So let's start talking about how to build a solid solution architecture document, starting with its various components. And that's all in the next video. So click here to watch it.